Welcome everyone to our first video on calculating the heats of reaction using Hess's law. In these videos, we are first going to describe what Hess's law is and why we use it. Then we're going to learn how to determine an unknown enthalpy change or heat of reaction when you're given a set of chemical equations. Next, we're going to define heats of formation. And then we're going to learn how to use heats of formation uh, to apply to Hess's law. And then finally, we're going to look at a mathematical equation for determining unknown heats of reaction. Let's start off with a definition for Hess's law. One way to state Hess's law is stating that the enthalpy change for a given chemical reaction is always going to be the same regardless of the path that the reaction takes. Let's use this diagram here to explain what this statement means. For a reaction converting reactants A to products B, there might be a direct path, but there also might be some indirect paths where A gets converted to C first and then C gets converted to B, or likewise A gets converted to D and D gets converted to B. For each of those paths, the net change is the same. You start with A and you end with B. What Hess's law states is that if you calculate the overall heat of reaction for any of those paths, they're always going to be the same, regardless of the path that you take. This works because enthalpy changes are state functions. State functions are measurements that, just like this, don't depend on the path that you take. Temperature change is a good example of another state function, which is path independent. Imagine you have two coffees that are both the same temperature and you want to get them warmed up. Well, one way to warm them up, probably the easier way, would be to put it in a microwave and put it in for a minute and use the microwave radiation to heat up that coffee. Now, alternatively, you could get a stir stick and just start stirring that coffee and stirring and stirring and stirring. And theoretically, at some point, you could impart enough kinetic energy on those molecules in the coffee so that they would reach the same final temperature as you would have reached if you put the coffee in the microwave. So you had two coffees, you started at the same temperature, you heated them up to get them to the same temperature, but the way you heated them up, the time it took was totally different but the change in temperature was exactly the same. Hess's law is valuable because it allows us to determine the energy change in any chemical reaction without actually needing to carry it out experimentally. So we can look at energy changes in advance of car carrying, out uh, carrying out a reaction experimentally, or sometimes reactions are too costly or we don't have the equipment to carry them out experimentally, but we can still learn about the energy changes that we should expect with those ahead of time. A good example where this applies would be a reaction like forming so solid sodium chloride. Now, the direct path which just involves one step, is to combine sodium ions and chloride ions. But to do that, you have to have them in the gas state. You need some specialized equipment to do that. As you know, sodium is found in nature as a solid. So a more practical way would be to react solid sodium with chlorine gas. And through a series of steps, we can reach the solid sodium chloride. If you were to sum all of these individual heats of reaction for all the intermediate steps, you end up with the same overall delta H, negative 411 kilojoules per mole. So our goal in using Hess's law is ultimately to find an unknown delta H value, an unknown heat of reaction. The value for this unknown heat of reaction is going to be equal to the sum of the heats of reaction for the individual steps. So as long as you can show that the balanced chemical reactions can be summed up to equal the overall target reaction or my unknown reaction, you can apply Hess's law. We're gonna go through an example, but let me just explain the overall approach to making use of Hess's law. 
we are given a target reaction with an unknown heat of reaction, unknown delta H value that we're trying to find. In order to find that unknown heat of reaction, we are gonna be given at least two and often more other reactions with known delta H values. These are my known reactions. Then we're going to rearrange those known reactions by reversing or multiplying by common factors so that the net sum of the known reactions is going to be the same change as the target reaction. And if we can show that the sum of the known reactions is equal to the target reaction, then we can apply Hess's law and sum up the delta H values of the known reaction to give the delta H for the target reaction. So let's look at an example here and show how we actually do this. In this example, we want to find the delta H value or the heat of reaction for this equation here. This equation at the top, my unknown value, that's what I'm going to refer to as my target equation. And I'm asked to do that using these following equations here. So Hess's law states that if I can show that the overall net change by summing up these four equations here is equal to my target reaction, then I can sum the delta H values and that will be equal to the delta H value for the target reaction. The way I'm going to manipulate these known reactions is to go substance by substance in my target reaction and try to identify what side of the equation I need substances on and the molar coefficient I need for each substance. So let's start with carbon monoxide here, CO. In my target reaction, I need one carbon monoxide molecule. I look through my known reactions and I see carbon monoxide shows up here. In this reaction here, I have one carbon monoxide as a product. So I need it as a reactant, I have it as a product. So what I'm gonna to need to do here is I need to reverse this equation. Here's the reversed equation. As we've learned, the delta H value for the reverse of a chemical reaction is the same numerical value, but the sign is reversed. So I've gone from negative 110.5 to positive 110.5. So I've dealt with carbon monoxide. Next up, nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide, I have one nitrogen dioxide as a product. I need one nitrogen dioxide as a reactant. So let's reverse that reaction as well. On my product side, I need carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. And I'll need one of each. And note that in my known equations, I have one carbon dioxide and one nitrogen monoxide on the product side. So I don't need to make any changes to these. So I'm just going to rewrite these below. Note that when I rewrote these equations, I lined all of the reactants and products up so that their reaction arrows were lined up vertically. And I also lined up the delta H values. This will make it easier for you to show that the reactions sum. Now I'm going to look at the overall change for these four reactions. Any substance which appears in the same quantity on the reactant and product side has not undergone a chemical change. So we'll cross it out, just like we crossed out spectator ions in net ionic equations. So here, let's start off at the top. I see one carbon on the product side, and then down here I see one carbon on the reactant side. So there's no change right there. I see one half nitrogen on the product side. I see one half nitrogen on the reactant side. I'll cross those out. Here I have one oxygen plus one half oxygen. So I have 1.5 oxygens on the product side. And likewise on the reactant side, 1.5 oxygens. So there's no change in those oxygen molecules. So all I'm left with here is carbon monoxide plus nitrogen dioxide are converted to carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide, which is equal to the target reaction. So I've shown 
that we can sum these reactions and the overall net change for these four reactions as written now is equal to the target reaction. And Hess's law states then, we can sum the heats of reaction for these known reactions and that will be equal to my unknown delta H value. Therefore, the heat of reaction for our target reaction is negative 226 kilojoules.